Hello and welcome to another SciShow talk show, the SciShow episode where we talk about stuff with cool people. Now you may hear that the workout studio downstairs is having a bit of a dance party. Just try to ignore it. Today we have with us <laughs> Diana Six of the University of Montana, a professor of forest entomology. So you study forest bugs. I do. That's, I guessed right. Yes. I also have some special guests here. <laughs> this, in this Petri dish, we have five dead pine bark beetles. Right, mountain pine beetle. Mountain pine beetles. How many pine beetles are there? I mean, bark, what? Okay, what, t t t t tell me more. <laughs> I don't know how many there are, and I don't think anybody does. Okay. Um, but they are, there's so many, sometimes you can track them by radar. Um, it's a massive amount of these tiny little insects Like flying out around. There. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. flyers. Yeah. There's just an amazing amount of them. Okay. Um, there are so many that they've killed something like 40 hectares of forest. 40. 40 million 40 hectares. That's Much more. more than 40. That's a million <laughs> times more than million, 40 hectares. Yes. Hectares of forest just over the last few years in Western Oh, wow. America. Recently. It's big. This is, so this is a huge problem. How long has this been a problem? Well, it depends how you look at it. Uh, mountain pine beetle's been developing outbreaks for millennia. Okay. I mean, it's, it's native, it's been doing so this for a long time. So it's just sort of like time. a plague of locusts kind yeah. of thing, yeah. except with trees. Yeah, but recently, uh, over the last 15 years is when we've seen this, this massive kill off. And it's pretty different than anything we've seen in the past. And that is because of? It's because of the climate. Yeah. Um, it's just so outbreaks now. are normal, but this one is just so much bigger, and it has so many different uh, characteristics. So it, th this particular outbreak is ten times, actually more than ten times bigger than anything that's ever been mm. recorded. It's probably the biggest insect outbreak ever recorded on the planet. So what we're seeing is they're moving into areas where trees don't have the same level of resistance. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're worse in the areas where they've been, mm -hmm. but they're also moving into new areas because it's warm enough for them. And that's a really big problem because those trees, you know, they've never had to battle the beetle before. So they haven't really evolved the same level of defenses. And so these trees are just, you know, they're like sitting ducks. So there's a kind of, there's like an immune system against beetles oh, among yeah, trees. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Trees aren't just sitting out there waiting to get chewed up and killed. <laughs> <laughs> they fight. Um, trees are pretty pretty scary. They have amazing amounts of physical and chemical weapons. I mean, they're really well defended. Mm. Um, so it's pretty amazing that something, you know, five millimeters long can, can do what it's done. Mm -hmm. uh, so what about these little animals do you study? Uh, all sorts of things, all the way from genomes to what they do in, in the ecosystem, but my favorite part is looking at their microbes. Because these insects absolutely cannot do much without their microbes. Just like us, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we can hardly digest anything. Yeah, if you look at the human microbiome, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, we rely on our, our bacteria and stuff. There are more these bacteria cells too. in us than us cells. Right. And I don't know if that's true for beetles, but they've got a few that are really important. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, if you're eating a tree, I imagine that's not it particularly first. I mean, you have the immune system to deal with. Yeah. Second, you're yeah. talking about eating a tree. Like, it's not yeah. something that I can do. No, and There's beetles actually can't do it either. Okay. They can't eat a tree any easier than us. So, in order to use this tree, they bring in a bunch of partners. So, they've got these bacteria in their guts that help them right at the beginning. Because like I said, trees have all these chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. And so they've got to contend with these toxins that the trees produce. Um, you know that really nice smell of a Christmas tree and mm -hmm. so forth? That's the toxins. Right, okay. So it's actually, <laughs> I don't want to ruin anybody's holiday <laughs> well, well, experience. I'm not but eating it. Yeah, that's <laughs> true, just, just smelling it. But, so they've got to deal with that. And it's, it's poisonous. And so they have bacteria that break those down. Mm -hmm. But then once they get past that, you know, then it's cellulose. Well, they can't yeah. really survive on that. Um, but they can survive on the little bits of sugars that they get out of the tree. But right. the big thing for these guys is nitrogen. Mm -hmm. They need nitrogen to make protein basically build right. a body. Yeah. And nitrogen there's almost is, none. Is, all, 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 is almost always the limiting factor in yeah. the ecosystem. Yeah, and especially for insects. So these guys have partnered up with a couple of fungi. And so they... Fungi. Carry these things, yeah. <laughs> so you've got, so not just bacteria, but also fungi, which are amazing at yeah. breaking stuff down. Yeah, and... Why you see them 
growing on dead things all the time. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize is fungi are not only good at breaking stuff down, but they can move it around. Mm -hmm. So these fungi go out into the tree, they gather up all the nitrogen, and then they pump it all the way back to where the beetles are feeding. Well, what's, what's in it for the fungi? Because then like, you're just <laughs> moving all your nutrients to somebody else. Well, I, they probably hang on to what they need, but they move it to where the beetles are because it's in their best interest. Because the beetles can move the around. The beetles can move around and the fungi can't. So if the fungi want to get to the next tree when they run out of food, they, they have to have somebody the to alive. take them. So yeah. this is their taxi. Oh my, yeah. that's a complicated problem. So I, I like, uh, sounds like you know pretty uh, amazing amount about this, uh, obviously because they are such a problem. Are there more well-studied bugs in the world? Oh, there's a lot more well-studied insects okay. out there. You look at a lot of the agricultural cr um, crop pests. Okay. Those are yeah. really well known. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that even after more than 100 years of studying, not me personally, I'm not quite that old, but <laughs> <laughs> of, of other scientists studying these insects, uh, we still don't know much about bark beetles. So part of why we don't know a lot about these amazing insects is that most of the research has been on how to kill them. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't learned a lot about their basic ecology, which is pretty amazing. Uh, but with this massive outbreak we have now, as you might suspect, people are getting more interested. Mm -hmm. And so people are looking at the microbes and all these things. And so we're learning a lot, but it's going to be a while to understand them. Yeah, I mean, you talk about how you know the most well-studied insects are the ones that are agricultural pests. Yeah. But these are now on the scale that I imagine the Canadian government is considering them an agricultural pest because oh, that yeah. is a huge industry <laughs> for Canada. Yeah. yeah. Canada has put hundreds of millions of dollars into mountain pine beetle research. Mm -hmm. they, they're very concerned about these guys. And it's an ongoing problem for them because even though in British Columbia, you know, now that the beetles eaten 80% of the trees in that province, um, it's moving, you know, it's, yeah. it's a done deal in British Columbia, but now it's moving across Alberta as an exotic. It's actually in Saskatchewan already. So you say exotic. Yeah, um, it's not, it hasn't been in that part of Canada before. So this is so entirely, so un completely unexposed trees that have basically absolutely. never seen. Absolutely. Not only unexposed trees, um, but a brand new species of tree mm. that has never been in before. So it's in jack pine, and that's the main component of our boreal forest. So that, that's a big deal. That's kind of terrifying. I, w I would not have thought <laughs> that it would be something so small. Um, they're very hard. Yeah. They make little, a little noise. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> oh, God. <Oops. laughs> oh, now, now they're all Now he's released one into Missoula. Who they're knows what's going to happen? They're super dead. <laughs> you yeah, only brought dead. me they're the dead, dead ones. <laughs> I, I almost got one in my mouth. They're not that bad. Uh, we eat them. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, no, no. We we don't eat the adults because they're they're kind of tasteless. But but the but the <laughs> larvae. They don't taste bad. They just don't taste. They just don't taste. So why eat them? Uh, but the larvae that you can take out of the tree, they taste just like pine nuts. And we've actually made pesto out of them. We get the basil and you grind them up. No, really, they're not bad. I love it so much. <laughs> that is, I mean, why didn't you bring me, oh, I mean, it's not larvae time. I, well, I should have, I, sh I, I can someday. I can bring you some larvae. The larvae I mean, are, are yeah. really good. Um, it takes some convincing for people, but once they've tried them. It I am a super good. believer in insects as a protein source and like a future food source. Yeah, well bark beetles have all sorts of other uses people don't know about. So, you know, as food, you know, you can eat the larvae, you can put them in your pesto. Um, <laughs> but I actually used to brew beer with yeast that you get out of their mouth parts. Wow. And. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good beer. It's won an award. I don't do it anymore because I was getting fat. But <laughs> <laughs> you liked it too much. <laughs> so That's amazing. You removed yeast from a right. beetle's mouth parts right. and Several made beer with them. it. The first two were total failures. They tasted terrible. Uh, but the last one... Did you mix it with brewer's yeast or is it just... No, no. I just oh, used wow. it by itself. That's amazing. Made some really good porters and... You're I awesome. Guess. No, the beetles are awesome. Well, <laughs> and terrible. <laughs> they're, they're really one of the most interesting organisms on the planet. They have 
ways to communicate with each other, to mass mm. attack, to, to use microbes. Right. The things that they do are, are absolutely amazing. You know, you have to think of that, this little tiny insect, what it does. Got to have respect for your enemy. That's right. Well, that, that's absolutely fascinating. Do, do, do we have an, an animal? We do? We have an animal. We, we're going we're gonna to share an animal with you. Oh, good. Jesse from Animal Wonders is here, and I have no <laughs> idea what's coming. Jesse is here. I'm going to close my eyes, and she's going to put an animal in my hands. I'm going to guess what it is. I'm a, uh, what are you? Are you a, is it a, something? Oh, it's hard. I thought for a second it was like an, a mammal, but now I, I'm like so hard to not <laughs> open my eyes. What are you? Are you a, a beetle? Are you a... Is this a is this a giant freaking cockroach? <laughs> yes, congratulations! <laughs> I thought it is, it's a nice lady. I, too. I thought it was a Why mouse it because it was so heavy, like a like a, a small like a small rodent. A mouse with a little armor. <laughs> but then I touched it, and it was not. But it's got little like mice feeling feet. Yeah, would you like to hold it? Oh, him? sure. I love these. This is Sue, and this is Rick. Don't eat it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not these. Save you, so <laughs> These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Yeah, one of the largest in the world. Oh. The largest, not the longest. The I largest can in the world. I can tell you that it looks from the front like a regular cockroach, and yeah. that's freaking me out. But otherwise, <laughs> um, I did not. I do not like cockroaches. Having grown up in Florida and accidentally killed one on my face once when I was sleeping. Good story. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> also, they, they smell bad on the inside. E they smell bad? I, that seems to be what I remember from killing uh, one on my okay, face. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was just there was a smell, and because the experience was so bad, I associate okay. it with bad uh, things. Well, I don't know. These guys don't smell. Well, not on the outside. Well, they don't. I don't know. I've never smelled. They've never smelled bad. I've never stomped one. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> You're their caretaker. Yeah. Uh, but do you uh, do you do you keep them around just for showing off, or do you feed anything? Uh, yeah, yeah, they are multi-purposeful. <laughs> <laughs> they do educational presentations, and uh, they are also feeder food. Mm -hmm. You know, feeder insects. your food. Some um, so circle of life, man. In Sorry. Our, our lizards love them. Some of our frogs oh. love them too. Yeah. I know. I know. And when they I say when I say love, thing, you don't mean the cuddling. They have little bugs on them that may love them. No, they don't love them. They have little bugs, you're talking about bacteria that, that live with other, yeah. other species. <laughs> These guys have a, a little mite that lives on right. just them. Right. Just them. And they originally thought that they were actually going in and like drinking their blood or something, but they don't. They just hang out around their mouth, mouth pieces, uh, mouth parts and their legs there, and they actually feed on the same food that these guys eat. Bugs living on bugs. Mm -hmm. And they're not bugs. These aren't bugs. They're not bugs. Wait, what? What's not bugs? This isn't a bug. This is not a bug. But I thought it's a it's a com a colloquial term. It's okay. not a scientific term. But are is anything a bug then? Yes, there are true bugs. Okay, but what what makes this not a bug? Uh, it does not have sucking mouth parts. Oh, so all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. I feel like that's a plus. Like I'm glad you don't have sucking mouth parts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, cockroaches are, are pretty terrifying. Uh, they're not terrifying, I would say, because they can't really hurt us. I mean, they can spread disease. No, um, I mean the only scary thing about cockroaches is how fast they move when you turn on the light. They hate light. <laughs> yes, they scream, and some can fly. Whoa, These guys. Whoa, whoa. Oh, he's, he's showing off how fast okay. he can move. That was scary. See, <laughs> when you start moving quickly, then I'm not happy. <laughs> So these guys are going to live in huge colonies. That's what cockroaches do best. And there's over 4,000, there's about 4,000 species of cockroaches. 30 of them are going to be pest species, and four are really well known. It's like the German, the American, mm -hmm. um, the Asian. Those are like the major pest species. Um, but these guys are not considered a pest species. No, yeah. These guys are pretty neat. Um, and they're from... Madagascar. Oh, right, because they're the no. Madagascar hissing mm -hmm. cockroach. Hissing co so hissing, how would you hiss? I would, if I was angry, are you, like, why, like, when like, I would hiss? Like, how do you physically hiss? I would go, 
like that. Yeah. The back of my throat. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So they don't have a mouth like us, so they can't produce sound like we do. Uh -huh. So they have little holes down the sides of their exoskeleton right there where they, they kind of... The little dark there. area? It's not the little dots. Okay. It's that's, not. that's It's somewhere else. Um, it's just like on that crease there where that they come together kind oh, okay. of. And uh, they're going to breathe oh, yeah. through that, the, the sort spiracles of push. as well. But what they can do when they hiss is they will take in a lot of air and then they'll squeeze their body together and they'll shoot air out the sides of those spiracles and that's what causes that hisses, hissing noise. And they have different types of hisses. They, they have um, the threatened hiss where, ah, something's gonna eat me or step on me, you know, stay away. Um, and then they have the... Courting hiss. <laughs> they do. The, hey ladies. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> <laughs> Very attractive. Thing. Yeah. Hot. <laughs> These guys, have you heard that they can survive a nuclear blast and stuff? I like have that? heard that. Um, they can also survive two weeks without their head. Well, that, where's their brain at? Good, yeah. It's not in their head, it runs all the way down their body. Oh, they have a whole like spinal brain. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So why would they die? Right. Well, starvation. Uh, yeah. They, just they can't eat. The head's just for eating the food. Just for eating. And seeing. They can see. Right. And, and feeling. feeling. Yeah. So they would just, you know, walk around headless, bumping into walls, but their body would <laughs> still move if you call that living. I don't know. <laughs> 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 around, bumping into things. Yeah. So these guys are pretty popular in, uh, po in uh, what is it, um, popular culture? Yeah. Okay. In modern culture. I don't know. Um, yeah. They are on Fear Factor shows. Right. You know, people are scared of cockroaches, so they fill these big tubs with, you know, and they have to lay in the cockroaches. So as long they as they don't have to put it in your mouth. Well, they, they have eating competitions yeah, as well. Yeah, see, I'm not a fan of that. The um, Guinness World Record for cockroach eating is 36 Madagascar hissing cockroaches in an, in an hour. And the reason that, that you can't like eat more. That seems like pretty easy to beat. The reason you can't eat more is because when they're alive and raw like that, they have a mild neurotoxin. So not only do their legs, if you can feel, they have yeah, little they pokers, have stabbers on their yeah. legs there. Um, that's gonna it's gonna cut your mouth, and also you're gonna your mouth and your throat go numb, and so you can't feel well, what's going on in there. So you maybe, can't swallow. Maybe not so much of that. Not a good idea. Yeah. Don't go getting into cockroach okay. eating contests. <laughs> <laughs> I promise not to eat you. Ever. <laughs> Unless somebody paid me a lot of money. So these guys aren't beetles. Right. Um, they're in a different order than the beetles. How, how can I tell? Uh, they're not going to have the sheath wings, the hard outer wings. Right, you don't have wings at all. Wings, yep. Okay. But they are so, in the So beetles have, beetles have two sets of wings. Yes. They have the covery wings. The outer. But What's it called? Elytra. 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 Yeah. Oh, good. We've got an entomologist on the show. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but, the cockroaches we had in Florida do fly. There are some that have wings. Okay. They don't have the outer okay. sheet, though, the elytra. Oh, it's a terrible noise oh, the that they make yeah. when they're flying, and it's dark, and you know that they're there. And <laughs> they're coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I love Montana so much. No cockroaches, <laughs> except at Animal Wonders. <laughs> that's, that's where they should be. Well, first I have to say thank you to Rick and Sue for coming on the show and being super sweet, uh, very nice to each other. Thank you, Jesse, for putting this in my hand. Diana, thank you for your amazing depth of knowledge uh, and all, like just your your great work on behalf of the forests of North America, and and your tremendous respect for those little old guys there. And thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. If you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to YouTube.com/SciShow and subscribe.